I finally figured out how to grow live plants in a sea monkey tank. The small plastic aquariums that people usually keep sea monkeys in differ from conventional fish tanks in one obvious way. They never have any plants in them. These little briny habitats often have plastic decor to make things appear more interesting instead. You're probably familiar with the well-known Magic Castle and Mars tanks, which have themed ornaments to add some colour and texture. Two now discontinued tanks, the Robo Diver and Space Shuttle Expedition, took a similar approach as well, with the Robo Diver having an octopus surrounded by sunken treasure and the Space Shuttle having a floating astronaut. But again, nobody ever manages to put real plants into these tanks. So why is this? Well, the main reason is because plants used in aquariums are usually freshwater species, so they can't tolerate the high salinity environment of a brine shrimp tank. Some people have speculated that certain moss species might be able to tolerate slightly salty or brackish water, but so far, it seems that nobody has had any long-term success keeping sea monkeys and plants together. On this channel, I often talk about the importance of promoting the growth of microalgae in sea monkey habitats. These are microscopic, single-celled organisms that function in a similar way to plants, converting waste and carbon dioxide into life-sustaining oxygen. And while this green microalgae is a great source of food for your sea monkeys, it's still not a plant. I've always thought the best approach to this problem would be to try growing macroalgae in a sea monkey tank. You probably know this by its more common name, seaweed. Now, seaweed also technically isn't a plant, but it does have that green foliage look we're going for. And if anything was going to work, it would be this. Well, it just so happens that seaweed was indeed a good option. This is my Sea Monkeys Ocean Volcano tank, which for the last few weeks now has been growing a healthy bunch of Ulva intestinalis, also known as gutweed. Its Latin name references those long, unbranched filaments which resemble intestines. Just like terrestrial plants, gutweed produces oxygen as a byproduct of its metabolism. Quite often you can see these little air bubbles getting trapped in those filaments, which in turn causes them to float. Those long strands grow surprisingly quickly too, over an inch every day. I wish I could do that. I actually have to trim them with scissors a few times a week, just so this thing doesn't completely take over the tank. It's a bit of work snipping the ends and slowly removing each strand from the tank, but it's actually quite cathartic. I kind of think of it as being like my little aquatic bonsai. Some good news is that it doesn't appear to bother the sea monkeys in any way either. Just like real monkeys, they swing through its branches unfazed. Well, except for some of the males, they like to latch onto the filaments because apparently they're the perfect size for mating practice. I'm not sure if this harms them in the long term, but it is kind of funny to watch. I've put some of the gutweed under the microscope here so you can see how it looks up close. The filaments are made up of thousands of individual cells, and I notice that a whole bunch of small ciliates seem to be crawling all over it too. This is a great sign. It means the gutweed is not only doing its part to filter the tank of harmful toxins, but it's also promoting the growth of beneficial microorganisms that help to keep the tank clean too. I found that the more trophic levels of organisms you have in an aquarium, the healthier that aquarium tends to be overall. So now you're probably wondering how exactly I did this. Well, the truth is, I'm not 100% sure, but I do have a few clues to go off. Firstly, I haven't actually put this stuff into the tank intentionally. It seeded itself in here through natural means. Gutweed is highly abundant around coastal areas and rock pools worldwide, and I live quite close to the beach. So this seaweed has probably blown into the tank being carried through an open window by wind and air currents. Green seaweeds are typically found higher up the beach rather than in deep water because they rely on sunlight for photosynthesis, so it's not too surprising to see this species show up in my tank. Other than ample sunlight, this macroalgae also needs nutrients to survive. In fact, it's very similar to microalgae in that respect. The sea monkey's poop functions as a great natural fertilizer, and this light in the tank's lid provides plenty of extra energy for photosynthesis. Side note, these lids are available for both the Ocean Zoo and Ocean Volcano tanks in the Pico Cosmos web store, link in the video description. For anybody curious to know more about Olva intestinalis, I took a measurement of the tank's salinity using a refractometer, and I read around 28 ppt, so just a little lower than that of seawater. I've read that it's apparently edible too, but I haven't given it a taste quite yet. Beyond that, growing this stuff is still a bit of a mystery to me. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions about it, and I'll do my best to provide what info I can. I'll keep experimenting as well to see what else I can learn. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.